The ODM party, through its Secretary General Edwin Sifuna, today released a statement over the Kemsa scandal. And I've read that statement. And after reading that statement, I've been a very disturbed man. And one question has been lingering in my mind since that time. That is it possible that someone within the ODM party is actually undermining and sabotaging Raila Odinga's presidential bid from within? Because Raila Odinga has always been known to fight impunity in this country. He's always been known for his reform credentials. But that statement by Edwin Sifuna portrays a different image. The image that ODM is now supporting impunity. I want you to listen to Edwin Sifuna and then tomorrow I'll go into that statement step by step. Listen in. That as far as the price of PPEs and all the COVID-related supplies go, conventional wisdom must hold that such prices were lower before COVID-19 ravaged the whole world and that any procurement happening subsequent to that and in the current circumstances has to come at uh, with higher values. Higher prices alone cannot therefore be a basis for doubting the probity of those who undertake those tasks. It is disheartening to hear no less than a senior government official, no less a government senior, a senior government official than the deputy president, go public with improper statements that at least now nobody will blame me for stealing COVID-19 funds. This statement suggests that it is okay for the funds to be stolen for as long as he is not to blame. Or even more unsettling, it expresses the jealousy of being left out of the baby We have pointed out before that the Deputy President's recalcitrance and lack of political emotional intelligence are a hindrance to the smooth running of government. At a time when he should help the President crack the whip, crack the whip on corruption cartels within government, he holds campaigns at his residence while cheering wrongdoing within government in the mistaken belief that any perceived failures by His Excellency the President will raise his dwindling political fortune. We must ask the Deputy President to either rise to the occasion and play the role of Deputy President or ship out and let the President work in peace. We will keep raising any concerns we have with government operations specifically related to the COVID-19 issue through the proper channels without unnecessary drama and hubris. We continue to fulfill our mandate as a spouse in the ODM manifesto while remaining cognizant of our role as a unifying agent in Kenyan politics. We will therefore not join the blanket condemnation bandwagon, but will keep probing and defending the right of Kenyans to get government services efficiently and at the right prices. For that reason, we ask that the media, house, media houses and other news agencies exercise some responsibility in their coverage because sensational reports, especially when uh, the process of audit has not been conducted and the investigations are just uh, beginning, may compromise international support for our COVID-19 endangering ordinary Kenyans and not just the leaders. Any information on wrongdoing must be passed to the rightful agencies for clear action. One of the things that must be very clear to everyone is that initial reports of wrongdoing can come from any source. It is very well possible that uh, some of the claims that we are hearing are uh, originating from people with vendor interests within Kemsa. It is our position as a party that it would have been best for the procurement of all COVID-related uh, items by Kemsa to be subjected to an audit and that uh, from that audit we can see recommendations for investigation and prosecution for certain individuals. Because it is only an audit that can ascertain the veracity of that, uh, some of these claims. This is not to exonerate anyone uh, who will be implicated in any corruption uh, if they are found to have been involved in any corruption. All we are saying is that uh, we have men and women uh, working within these organizations, careers that are being threatened, careers that are being ended, uh, I believe that in any organization there might be one or two bad apples. But blanket condemnation is what we would like to discourage. So we are calling for an audit 
prior to those uh, investigations because investigations before an audit uh, presume criminality where an audit has not established the fact. Uh, that is all that we would like to say and I will take any questions in the end. In other words, you're in a way discrediting the story that was done by NTV. We are not discrediting the story. We are saying that as uh, responsible media house, uh, you can do your work, but it is for the government agency to realize that media reports alone and should not be the basis of investigation. Uh, we believe that if we wanted to uh, get to the bottom of the issues at Kemsa, and we believe we want to get to the bottom of the issues at Kemsa, uh, criminal investigation should be preceded by an exhaustive audit because, uh, as I've told you, there are many interests in this uh, matter still. It is possible that uh, uh, some of the claims that we see are motivated by vendor interests that might not necessarily come to light uh, in a TV program, which is why we are saying that we need an audit by the Office of the Auditor General because aside from the annual audits that uh, uh, the Auditor General is supposed to perform on government agencies, there are continuous auditing that is performed by uh, that office. So we are inviting the Office of the Auditor General to first of all ascertain the veracity of this matter. And uh, on the issue of uh, TV reports, for instance, can uh, somebody coming up and saying the price of uh, the phone you are holding is supposed to be X or is supposed to be Y. It is something that has to be brought out at an audit because the truth of the matter is at the inception of this uh, pandemic, uh, prices of these items, because there was no demand, uh, they were lower than at the height of, uh, or the, at the peak of the pandemic. And that you cannot even compare prices now and then. So if somebody shows up today, and uh, we can actually do this uh, experiment with you, and tells you that I can actually supply this Samsung phone you're holding at 10 shillings. And another one says, if you want a Samsung phone, it has to be 10,000 shillings. It is possible through a process of audit to actually ascertain whether the person who is saying you can send it to your attention is, is in a position to actually supply. We saw in the US uh, at the beginning of this pandemic, Governor Cuomo of uh, uh, New York complaining that in fact the states had been left to bid against each other in the procurement of PPEs. And that for instance if California was to bid uh, uh, 100 shillings per mask, and uh, New York is bidding 90 shillings per mass, the supplier will take the, the product to the highest bidder. And he was actually proposing for a central procurement by the federal government to uh, remove that situation where uh, the, 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 the counties or the, the states are bidding against each other. So what we believe is that a proper audit by the Office of the Auditor General will bring out all these facts and then in that audit, uh, if there are criminal proceedings to be taken, it will be on the basis of the audit and not uh, bringing the cut before the horse by starting by uh, you know, criminal investigation. In other words, what uh, the Secretary General is saying is that uh, first of all, we thank the media for being a piece of law, but uh, you can't conduct prosecution on the basis of a piece of law. I think that this is blowing is to direct you to check whether there is a problem or not. And then there are agencies, starting with the Office of the Auditor General, that would now be able to bring out uh, evidence upon which uh, prosecution can be done. I think that's what we are saying. Uh, it's not to condemn the media. I think the media is doing a very good job in terms of this uh, law. But uh, uh, sometimes we are prone to cheering of justice. And uh, I think that is what we have to be a bit careful about, especially on an issue as sensitive as the COVID pandemic. Because people are dying. And when uh, we, uh, we divert attention to mob lynching, uh, people, people lose faith even in their fight. They say, okay, then this is just an, a gravity uh, It's not really. And uh, you know, there are so many skeptics who are saying, in fact, uh, this uh, COVID thing doesn't even exist. So when now we have this kind of situation, um, acting on inconclusive uh, evidence, 
then we compromise our war against uh, the pandemic. So we will continue as ODM supporting the media to unearth their own doing. But once we get an uh, inkling that something might be going wrong, we would rather that everything is professional. Thank you. Is there any other Any other question? question? I think there's none. No.